Okay, so today what we're going to do is look at activity 5.6, which is physical properties analysis. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to create a part. Now, you may already have this part in your files because it was one of the first practice parts that we did. So I'm not going to spend too much time on creating the part. Um, what I'm focused on is the physical property analysis. So you'll notice up here that we're going to want our object to be made out of aluminum. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But here's our part. It's an isometric drawing with 0 0.25 inch grid. So that means that every line on the picture is 0 0.25 inches. So for example, if I want the width of this part, I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 grid spaces wide. So 7 times 0 0.25 gives me an overall width of 1.75 inches. So use that guide to create the part if you have to or redimension the part that you already created. So go ahead and pause the screencast um, to create the part. Okay, your part should look something like this. So if I scroll down here, it says directions for aluminum object one. Create the part in Inventor. Once you've created the part, use I properties to answer the following questions. So I'm going to expand Inventor for a minute. And I'm going to go over here to my properties. Notice where it says generic at the top of the page. If I click on this, this brings up a materials list. And it has lots of materials on there. And one of the materials happens to be aluminum. Now, there are three different choices for aluminum. Um, I'm going to choose the first one, aluminum 6061. Now, notice not much changes, but the color changes slightly. Now I can go back to look at my sheet and we'll start using eye properties. So you'll find that in the orange eye on the top left of your inventor screen. So I click on that and I go down to this thing called eye properties. And I click on that and it gives me a bunch of choices. We're really only concerned with the last box way over here, which is physical. Notice how aluminum has already been highlighted, and it gives us a density of aluminum of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, requested accuracy, low, uh, we'll turn that up to medium or high. Then I want to hit update. When I hit update, it gives me this whole section right here. And so I get mass, area, and volume. So what is the volume of the part? Well, I'm just going to read it off of my I properties and I get V equals one point one, sorry, 1.375 um, inches cubed. And I want to put my answers in bold, so I'll do that. Next question says, what is the density of aluminum? This may require research. In this case, it doesn't. Precision wants for three decimal places. So I look over here at my properties, and I see 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So I will just type that in as 2, as D equals 2.700 grams per cubic centimeter. And just looking off of my eye properties there. Then it asks, what is the density in, of aluminum in pounds per cubic inch? Um, that doesn't give me this over here. Um, so I'm going to use a Google conversion um, to get pounds per cubic inch. So, give me one second here. 
So if I go to Google, I will type in my um, density of 1.375 inch. Sorry, I'll type in my density of 2.700 grams per centimeter cubed to pounds per inch cubed. And I hit enter. And it gives me this number of 0 0.097543. So I go back to my problem and ask for three decimal places. So I'm going to record 0 0.098 equals 0 0.098 pounds per inch cubed. And then I'm going to bold it, and I get that. Now it asks to find the mass of aluminum in pounds mass. So it gives me that number right there. So I'll type in M equals 0 0.134. 0 0.134. And I will highlight that. Now, the surface area is a bit trickier. Um, surface area is not given to you, so you have to figure it out. So, here's how you are going to figure this out using Inventor. Uh, you need to basically add up all of the areas into one thing and so what you do there is you're going to go back to your sketches and add up the different areas now the good news here is that all of these things are rectangles so just divide up your part into rectangles and then add those together. So I'll give you an example of one of them. If I go back to my first sketch, double click on it, I notice that I have basically two squares. Okay, my first square here is 1.75 inches high because I have my 0.5 plus my 1.25 and this top part is half an inch long so for example I'll just type in area 1 and then that's going to equal 1.75 times 0 0.5 which gives me an overall area for that particular piece of 0 0.875 inches squared. Okay, then I can take my next rectangle. Well this is 1.25 inches times 0.5. So area 2 equals 1.25 times 0 0.5, which gives me area 2 of 0 0.75 inches squared. So I'll finish my sketch, and I can go through each of those areas. Okay? Now, if one quart of cleaning solution will clean 1,200 sorry, 12,400 inches squared, how many quarts will be required to clean 3,500 parts? Uh, we'll get to question six there in our next screencast.